like we did the other day, the live with let's start um, with the grip. Um, so if you are a coach, right, or you get a new player, um, let's get straight to it. I mean, like, so if you try to teach the right grip on the long run, you're going to have success. Every player is different. And some players cannot hit a one hand and volley, right? So we all, when we work with ladies, and, and they, like sometimes the, the forearm is not strong enough, so maybe two hands is better on there. But what I want to get the message out is that every player is different and every player can learn differently. So don't just start rigidly to teach two handed volleys. Like, you know, you, you have players who are able and capable to hit the one hand and back and volley. You're gonna be surprised how many. Uh, do it right right off the bat. So um, Yeah, so let's get to the grip um, Continental would be perfect Right, so you know the continental you have like eight bevels and if you put the this is bevel number two This the, the one here on the top Sat on the side and then you have the index knuckle here and the heel pad and if you draw a line here and you line it up with this second bevel both you're gonna have a continental, a really good continental grip. So just always going to the grip back. Um, the other way, like I always show, if you have kits, they're gonna be bevel. What? What is that? What is a bevel? So they're gonna be different. Every kit is different, right? And every with kits, you just let them put the racket here and under the armpit, and make sure when they grip that they just don't go here. They need to go really around it, and when they pull it out, they have a pretty good continental as well. So. Um, the grip is crucial on the volleys. And let me tell you why straight right off the bat. So when you when there are two five three oh players, beginners, and you have a forehand grip, so everything that's here is easy to hit, right? With that grip. As soon as the ball gets low, you're gonna feel not comfortable in your arm. And why is that? Because you have a forehand grip or semi-western grip or western grip here. So too many players, when I watch them play, they have a Western or semi-Western on the forehand and they, they're complaining that they can't handle the low volleys. Yes, of course you cannot handle the low volleys because you have the wrong grip. And it is, so what do they do to adjust? They get closer to the net and they get a lot more because they have to go closer to the net because they don't want to catch any volleys low. And where do you get most of the volleys when you come in and the doubles or singles? The first volley is always around the service line area can be a little bit behind it or can be a little bit in front of it. And most likely the ball will drop a little bit and you have to hit a low volley. So not the best idea with the semi-western or western grip. So if you have a continental grip, you're in good shape. As I said earlier, when we talk about forehand and back and volley in a second, um, you have to see what you have in front of you as a coach and you have to see what kind of player you are if you're uh, just like, if you're a player, if you're not a coach. So, um, you know, some players can handle, as I said earlier, the one-handed volley, and some cannot handle it. They have to have a support hand on there. But try to teach the first, the one hand, because you have a better reach. And if you do it correctly, you, you, have a, you will have a better slice, and you just feel the racket a little bit better. So try to always go for that. Um, yeah, the camera is backwards that's why I'm, I'm right-handed but like if I there was one question I had on there um, all right guys so for in volley when we look at players most of the times you see when the ball comes right they they you see a lot of this stuff here and here and it all starts with having the arms in front of you in your volley so when you volley you're not waiting for the balls with the arms here you have the arms always in front of you. And as you see right here, that racket level is a little bit below my eyes, so I can look over there, and my arms are in front of me. So like, um, you know, the Brian brothers, they like to say, keep the elbow in front of the rib cage. So when you're waiting, the elbow's in front of the rib cage. So everything you're gonna contact will be in front of you. And that is one of the most important things because if that ball comes fast, a lot of, uh, if you're waiting here, you will be late on that ball. 
The ball can come as fast as it wants to if you are in a good athletic position and the arms are in front of you. So all you have to do now, you always try to step a little bit into the volleys. So you see that ball coming. Most likely it's about 0.45 seconds until the ball arrives. So that's why it's not a good idea to have the racket low. Have the racket in front of you, be able to look over because now you just have to hit that ball. If you have the racket low, it takes a little bit to get the racket up and then it's too late already. Because what you don't have when you volley is time. You do not have any time, so keep it simple. So keep the contact in front as we said. So another common mistake, once someone hit a volley, they fall back into that, right? So you hit a volley and you're ready. You hit a volley and you're ready. How many of the recreational players watch their balls when they hit the volley? So many players just watch their ball, they hit a good volley and they watch it, the ball comes in their late. Every time when you volley, you hit it and you're ready. You hit it and you're ready. Every time you're ready, after every single shot. Okay, so how to hit a forehand volley, I still go with the forehand volley. When you're ready, you, you put, you turn into your right leg a little bit if you're, if you're right-handed. So the camera is like uh, turned around so you see me as a left-handed player. So you put the weight on the outside leg here and you lay your wrist a little bit back. But everything when you do that, you keep your racket in front of you. You're not doing this and putting the weight on you because now, again, if you have an imaginary line here like a wall, you're passing this wall now, right? So you don't want that. You want to stay here in front. So the arm is in front of me. I have the record a little bit laid back right here. And now you, the ball's coming. Think about hitting or chasing the ball with the grip because you need a strong wrist here and you need to hit the ball right here to have a good control volley. So where do most players mess up? They're not, they're not locking the wrist. So at the beginning, when I tell my players, when they wait for the ball, use your left hand, use your left hand, and make sure that you pull the racket back, okay? So when you pull the racket back now, you're locking the wrist. And you need a locked wrist to have a good, good, stable volley. So if you pull the racket back, you lock your wrist, and now the ball can come as fast as I want to, you're good here. You like this, you're weak, and you're not gonna have a good volley hitting like this. All right, ready, athletic position, you pull the racket back, lay your wrist back, and now the grip chases the ball. I have a beautiful red ball here, so the, the, the grip goes to the ball. And let me make it a little bit easier, using my Top Spoon Pro here. So when you go, the grip goes and you hit that volley, but you want it. And the racket head always stays above the wrist. And you can only assure that if you make sure you lock the wrist and you go, it's right here where you contact the ball. So the grip goes first for the ball. And there are many ways to teach that. If you have, for example, let me see, if you have kits, You can put an arrow, an arrow here, and you can talk with the players. So you lay your wrist back, and the arrow points a little bit forward to the left. So you just, you know, just found that it's like a dollar. Uh, you, you make sure that when they are laying the wrist back, it points down forward to the left. So they know, oh, okay, I got the arrow in the right position, and now I can, I can volley that ball. So. Now, one of the most challenging things on the backhand volley. So backhand volley is usually for intermediate and beginner players, the weaker volley. And that's uh, because like most of the times, the forearm strength is not there. And if you do it with one handed, it is not easy. You have to work in combination with the lower leg. So upper and, body, uh, upper and lower body always work together. So the same principle. So you start out here. So what I like to teach my players is when they start, they pull the racket while they turn, while they turn a little bit and load the outside leg, they lay the wrist back 
and pull with the left hand the racket in the right position. So you see I'm still in front and I'm ready to go and I'm not overturning here. Very, very important, like I tell them, lock it here or when you pull it a little bit back, pull the racket towards you and you have a wrong, strong, a right, strong wrist. And then when they go, the contact is in front. So with the two-handed, you know, if you have a weak player, just let them make sure that the racket head is above the wrist when they do that. And if you think about it, you know, the, the left arm is the stronger arm. It's like a left-handed foreign volley. So the left hand pushes a little bit more and the right hand basically supports the volley. So if you have a player who cannot handle the one-handed grip, you need to make sure that they understand that the racket head is above the wrist and that the contact is in front and you just give the ball a little bit push there. So the left hand is very important for the one hand of volley. You have the left hand, I always tell them, when you have a racket, form an L with your fingers and put the racket, the hands around here, around the heart and then you add the other fingers. So you have a good stable base here and then the left hand stays on that racket. So you load in the left leg. The left hand stays there until you start to go forward with the hitting arm. When you start to go forward with the hitting arm, you push from the left to the right arm, to, from the left to the right leg, and your left arm goes back. So here you go, you load into the outside leg, arms out in front. Soon as you do this, your left arm goes back. So it's always action, reaction. So you need to counterbalance your movement. And the timing is crucial. So, so too many players when they volley, one of the biggest mistakes, right? They think the ball's coming there. So first of all, they go sideways and on both sides. You don't want to go sideways because when you look at the ball, the ball goes, you have to cut the angle off because if you go sideways, the ball just pushes you always further and further to the side and you have a longer distance to go. So have in mind, think about a, a 45 degree or like a V. A V coming from the belly button middle and goes in front of you. And then you only have the V vision. And when the V goes out like this, I, you're basically in a 45 degree. So you want to cut the ball and you go in a 45 degree. And uh, very important to know because if you go sideways, a lot of players that play doubles and they poach, the same thing, they go sideways here. You're cutting the ball off and you go diagonal forward. So, the next thing I see very often is when the players volley, they, they're stepping in. So they're just cross-stepping with the, not the outside leg, with the other leg. So they're just cross-stepping and that doesn't help anything. They're actually not going, going forward. You actively need to push into the ground of the outside leg. And at the same time when you start your forward movement, you go into the shot. And a very good drill to teach players how to load the outside leg and use the outside leg is you as a coach stand in front of them and you let them be on one leg and lift the other leg. And now when they go forward, let them tell them to let themselves fall forward. And at some, once they feel they're falling, they just go from the outside leg and hit and move in. So just make them lift the leg all the way to the front leg and then you step in on both sides, on the back and side as well. You have all the weight on the front leg, and then we hit it, you go in. So, on the outside leg, sorry. Outside leg, and hit it. A very good drill to get the feel, you, until you almost fall over, and then you have to make sure your arm goes forward and you hit it, because it's all about the timing. It's the perfect timing on the volley. Do not isolate and hit out of the arm, and try to make sure you push forward. So, let's go to the different heights of the ball. So when you volley, you have different heights. You have high volleys, medium volleys, and low volleys. There are different ways to teach and make the students understand how you hit the ball. So what I like, what I saw before is, so when you contact the ball on this medium height, basically if this would be a mirror, you guys could see yourself right now in the mirror, right, at contact you see yourself in the mirror. If the ball is low, right, I have to be lower, and you have the right position of the racket, you guys, again, could see yourself in the mirror because the strings point right to you. And if the ball is high, I can't show it perfectly now because 
room is too small. If the ball is high and you hit a high volley, you guys can see yourselves in the mirror again for that high volley. So the, um, just for the illustration, obviously, when you have players, so they understand the concept of the volley. So those three are the volleys you can get. So when you get a high volley, what I like to teach is, think about you have a hammer, the record is a hammer, and that's the nail out there. And you basically use your forearm to get that nail in there. So this is the motion you do when you hit the high volley. And then in a perfect world, let's say you're on the deuce side, and you want to hit the corner of the service box, and you, hold, you basically use your forearm right here, and, and you give the ball a little bit, and you'll have a little bit downward motion. Um, so that's on the, on the high volley. On the low volley, good practice is, I don't have it here right now, you have a coach and you're a player and you have a hacky sack. Those hacky sacks are super soft, and the coach tosses the hacky sack, you have to catch it with the face open. And it's really cool, those hacky sacks that just lay, lay on the racket if you have the right angle. If you like this, they fall down. So on the hacky sack up here, and you push the hacky sack back to the coach. And you do that a couple of times, you, you will get the feel for the low volleys. Really cool drill, um, very good um, response online as well with the hacky sack. Uh, a lot of players like that one. All right, so we have the different contact points uh, when you're coming in, how you push it and say, any other questions you have about the volley, let me know. Um, yeah, volley is, is a great thing if, if you are uh, hitting. Oh, the racket squeeze, that's another thing I forgot. You don't want to, you want to have the racket, if 10 is breaking the racket and tight and zero is like dropping it, you, on a, I would say you hold it on a three. Maybe a tiny bit tighter than the ground stroke, tiny bit, but you're still not over squeezing the racket because you cannot control the ball when it comes to you. And uh, another thing for the volleys, when you come in and you coming in and you split step and the ball comes right to your body, don't hit the fader on the forehand side because your elbow is in your way. If the ball comes directly and you can't move anymore, always use the backhand and fade it so it goes a little bit to the side because your elbow goes to the side, it's not in your way. So when you come in and it comes to your body, you split and you fade that ball. Um, very, yeah, very amazing um, if you understand the, the concept of how the ball is coming. And, uh, and there are millions of variations of drills. You just let me, um, you let me know if you want to need anything or know, want to know anything. What, yeah, what to do when the ball goes to the body. Here we go. That's what I just tried to explain. Use the backhand volley and catch the ball in front of you. Everything you want to catch in front of you. <clears throat> what else do we have on the volley? All right, let me tell you a couple of guys. Uh, let me tell you got a couple of more things. So when you look at the volley, I think Louis, Louis Kayer say that, said that on the volleys, I believe so. So when you have, if you think about a dot in the middle of the record strings and a dot on the very, very top of the neck tape on the top, and you connect the string, you connect those two dots, then that's the record pathway of your records. So if, let's say here's a net and here's my record. So if I, and then I connect the dot on top of the net in the middle of my record. So my record goes this pathway. So you tube down a little bit forward towards net. If the, rec can, uh, if the dot is right here and this is the net on top and I'm below, my racket has to go up to catch up with the dot. And if it's up here and the dot is on top of the net uh, and my racket is up here, I go a little bit more down. And you know, there's a, some people say you don't hit so much down on the volley. So my two cents and my experience is closer you get to the net, as more you can hit down on the volley because the ball is going to go in, right? As further you're away from the net, as more your volley motion goes forward, not so much down. So when you volley and you're close to the net, you want to hit down more on the volleys. Yeah, I mean, yes, the, the racket head is above at contact, above the, above the wrist. So here you're weak at contact here you're strong and uh, drills for the footwork for a beginner yes so if you have those circles right you put one circle left one circle right so the kids know 
the circles are right here now and here and then you put a circle for let's say you practice the foreign volley in front of them diagonal so now you know those those things where you throw a ball and sticks on there so if you have the circles here and you make them lift the right leg okay like what i said earlier because you need to push off the outside leg and then you toss the ball and they have to catch the ball and it sticks to that those uh, things that have those fuzzy stuff on there so they have to go once you toss it they have to extend here and push from the le right leg to that circle diagonal in front of them you can do that with four or five year olds pop and it sticks on there they pull it off and throw it back to you and that's how they start to use the outside leg and go diagonal forward that's a really really good uh drill and um yeah best of what else do we have um best starting position for a volley some people say to cheat a little bit yeah i mean like best starting position so one thing you cannot do when you play and you come to the net, you can't be straight and straight and expect to get low immediately. So the best valias, when you look back at Rafter or Edberg, they were running up low, they split and they were low. You need to be low to control the ball. So you can't just run up and then just try to get low. When you run up after an approach shot, you, or when you come up, you low, 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 you split and you low and you want to catch everything in front of you. Continental grip volleying. So, I mean, if you have beginner players and they can't handle a continental, obviously it's hard. You can cheat and go a little bit to Eastern grip. And you can gradually change that with the years of playing. So the grip is important, but let, I always say, don't let them hold a semi-Western or Western that's gonna destroy the shot. Make them hold a Eastern, at least, in perfect scenario as a continental grip. Mex Mexico. All right, what else, guys? What else do we have with the volley? Contact point, pushing forward. Yep, give me any ideas, anything you want to hear about the volleys. <clears throat> uh, I'm here to help, guys. If I think about anything, I will pick that up too. All right, guys, volleys, ask me anything about the volleys. How, where you contact, how you hit it, and um, I'm glad to help you. Yeah, no man's land. <clears throat> so this is a fine line if you're a beginner or intermediate player. So you have to see how good you, that's how I teach my students, like, but you have to see how good your approach shot is. So if your approach shot goes right to the person that's back, and you hit a deep back to them, even if it's hard, what do we see most of the times? That someone hits the ball deep, they, the player doesn't have to move a lot, and they do what? They lob you, right? So you cannot go too close in because you're gonna get lob. So that's one common issue in 2-5-3-0 level, that people hit the ball deep back, they get too close to the net, and then they get lob. So if you, the, the approach shot or the shot before you hit, before coming to the net will determine how close you can get to the net. And what I mean with that is if you look, here we go, let's go right here to the board. So that was a good question, let me just get a pen. So if you're standing here, right, and you get a short ball right here, and you come in, and you hit that ball right back to them here, and you close too much in, what, gonna, what are they gonna do? They're gonna lob either here, over that person, or they're gonna lob, they're gonna lob, over you here and then they, that guy has to go back and you have to move so if you get a approach shot here the best shots i always say power like finesse comes before power so if you can direct the ball from here Anywhere here, where they have to run out, or here, and you hit a good shot, then you can get a little bit closer, and they're gonna have that far distance to run. And this guy can pinch and close in, and you wait a little bit further for that lap here. So, I always say the angles are the most important shots. Angles are the most important shots. 
you're closer to net, you can drop, even drop volley. Everything that's short, everybody hates running forward. It's so easy. Even at the 4-0, 4-5 level, you're right where I just showed you, and you smack a ball to a player that's at the baseline, and it's not well hit, even if it's a little bit to the right or left. We all love to run right and left. So one step out, and they pop it up. And then at the beginner level, you're gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a mess. All right, here we go. Help me with my serve motion. Thank you. Guero, muchas gracias. Rack attention for kids U12. Um, go, go, don't go too hard. Uh, I would say, I don't know. Uh, my, my, five, my two cents are something between 45 and 50 in that range. Uh, the over hat I'm going to talk about in a second. Yeah, arm, straight arm. Oh, that's a great question. Straight arm for the volley or not? So, so this is this is how I explain it to my students. I would say, I hope you never punch someone, but if you go with a straight arm here, that doesn't create energy, right? If you have your arm bent and you extend, you you get power on there. So if you volley with a straight arm, you don't get anything on there. So you always have the arm a little bit bent and you extend it a little bit towards the contact, right? So you don't have it straight because you don't get anything on there. You have it a little bit bent and then you go and hit that shot. So how do you make sure how the ball will go away from the opponent? Let's go back here, okay? So if you are hitting a volley here and I'm up here, Let's say I'm on the deuce side here, get a, high, a medium or high volley. If you look at the ball as a clock, you want to hit, I always tell my players, hit two o'clock on the ball. And I know it's reverse now for left-handed, so I'm right-handed, it just shows reverse. So it would be like 11 o'clock on what you guys see and go to five, okay? So here it's two o'clock and you move to seven o'clock. So you can't take the outside top of the ball, you cut it, and go down to the left bottom. You can say right top, left bottom, or you work with the clock. If you look at the racket, if you look at the ball as a clock, that's always a good deal. Right top, left bottom. That's how you cut it on the forehand side. High to low. Uh, how high to low? Yes, the, the high to low. Uh, slide high to low action on the shot. So on the volley. So let's say, um, let's say this thing here is the net, right? So as, as, as close as I come to the net, I can hit more down. The ball is still going to go over. As further I'm away from this thing here, so now I can't go with the same angle down anymore. So now I have to go a little bit more forward. So what I said earlier is, as closer you get to the net as more you can hit down on the volley. Your motion is still forward, but as closer you get to the net, you can hit a little bit more down. <clears throat> and ask me more things on the volley, guys. Glad to help. Si, tenemos, podemos tener, uh, tener preguntas en español también. Yo voy a contestarlo. We can, we can auf Deutsch uh, ein paar Sachen machen. Antworte ich auch auf Deutsch. Y mojo mon apraviti po hrvatskom ili, ili srpski jezik. Mojo mo isto par... Uh, Pitanya mogu odgovoriti, so I can uh, answer in different languages if you feel like. Um, yeah, volley-wise, I think I went through it. Guys, if you don't follow Tennis House on YouTube, go up there, please, and subscribe. I'm uh, gonna uh, uploading daily things. This is gonna be uploaded on YouTube. Um, ask me anything. Keep keep asking with the volley. So because the volley is a, uh, it's important shot, and I, I like to help you guys with the volley. Ask me anything about the volley. It volleys when it's towards my body. Okay, we had that earlier. So, if the ball comes right to your body, here, right? Your elbow is in the way if you want to go on the forehand side, right? So you can't volley that one. So you need to make sure you use that backhand volley and you keep the racket head above the wrist and you fade it. So you cut it like this, so the elbow goes out this way now and the ball will go over and actually it's a good shot because if you fade it well enough it moves and spins to the outside of the court if you hit that shot okay 
¿Qué tipo? Guys, this is just one quickly in, uh, in Spanish. ¿Qué tipo? Uh, ¿Qué tiro recomendarás para luego atacar a la red slice o topspin? Sí, si puedes golpear con un topspin es mejor porque hoy en día las cuerda, cuerdas son, uh, son muy muy uh, modernas y tienes más velocidad y si tú golpeas bastante rápido en la cancha rápida como hardcore es muy difícil para devolver la pelota pero eso es muy bueno el slice también es muy bien en, en la cancha rápida porque la, la, si tú juegas el slice la pelota queda, queda baja y, y es muy, muy difícil para, para um, golpear una buena respuesta, respuesta en, esta, con, en, esta, en este sentido pues si tienes la posibilidad yo uh, atacaría con la derecha con, con el topspin y de vez en cuando tienes que mezclarlo y jugar un slice pero la mayoría yo jugaría con eh, topspin porque no, no, el oponente no tiene bastante tiempo para contestar <coughs> All right, here we go Ask me anything guys, do you recommend Ian Clay? Ian Clay? Ian Clay? Ian Clay? Si, si, si hay situaciones que cuando depende que pelota recibes la pelota corta si la pelota corta es fácil puedes puedes um, puedes como se dice en español uh, fake puedes hacer como un top spin y vas a vas a, a jugar una dejada si sí, eso es un buena, buen shot también no solamente slice y top spin uh, profundo en la cancha puedes también jugar una dejada y, y eso en clay um, sirve muy bien porque la pelota no sube tanto que en, que en hardcore cuando juegas en la jugada puedes mezclarlo un poco Uh, problem, let me see guys, try to help as much as I can. People don't serve in volley as much anymore. So, okay, so why do people don't serve in volley so much anymore? Um, because <coughs> the ball gets so fast over nowadays, they serve 140 that they return immediately. You, don't, you can't cover so much ground to get to the net. So you have to slow down the serve in order to get a little bit, to, to order to get a good position for the first volley. So that's why you see in doubles, The players hit like with 80%, but they hit the targets really well. And that's why they can get a little bit further into the court to hit the first volley. I have a problem that when the ball is coming fast my way, I get scared and spend muscle depressed. Yes, yes, DD, what, eight, one, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's normal. Once you learn to contact the ball in front of you and you do it over and over again, you're not gonna be scared anymore. Actually, if you have a racket in front of you, Most players, especially ladies, they tell me they're scared to get hit. You, yes, you will get hit if you have the racket below because it takes a second to protect yourself. Just hold your racket in front, way in front of you. Ball comes to face level. You just have to, you have it in front of you. Just turn the racket a little bit and you protect it. If you have your arms down, you're going to get hit. So when you're at the net, you want to make sure your racket is in front of you. It comes face level, you just turn the racket and you're not going to get hit. And actually, once you get used to it, You're gonna have really good volleys. The best, yeah, I mean, as close as you get to the net. Best scenario is here's the net, you hear it can just hit down. So the best players in the world in doubles, they are very close to the net, belly button almost touches the net. As close as you could get to the net, as easier the volley is gonna be. <clears throat> and the first volley always, guys, let's go back here, so do the board again. So the first volley, let me clean this. All right, let's do, I don't know, I don't care if it's singles or doubles. So let's say you play singles and you get a volley here, opponent is here. The first volley is a setup volley. So in singles, you want to go with that setup volley. Either if you're really good, you can drop them short on the majority if you get the first volley somewhere here. You go deep here, try to hit somewhere here or here, right? Whoop, you close it. You always follow the direction of your shot when you close in. You split step, that guy has to run out. And then you try the second one. When you're closer to the net, you try to aim for the corner of the service box. Let's say he hits down the line. You get that ball. You don't want to go deep because everybody likes running sideways. When you're close to the net, you just drop it here or hit an angle over there.
All right, here we go. The wrist should be always locked. I call it locked. When you're like this, this is weak. You pull it up, you have a strong wrist and you have a good volley. <coughs> Fitness, not gonna cover fitness today, guys. I'm gonna do, um, we're gonna do the volley today. So I think I answered a quite bit of the volley stuff. Let me see. Um, yeah, I'm gonna record this live stream. I got the earlier a question about that. I'm gonna put it on YouTube, follow us on YouTube. When you see that, here we go. What else do we have? All right. Any, I'm gonna go like a minute or two longer, guys, and that was it for today. One hand backhand return of serve. That, all right, guys. So, yeah, so this, I think I covered that pretty good with the volley today. Um, I'll thank you everybody for, for coming. Um, I'm gonna do one on a Sunday, 2 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. German time, Sunday. Hope to see everybody there on Sunday and yeah.